This is Karen O'Brien and I want to do a QGIS overview. So this is the latest version of QGIS. If you ever want to know what version of QGIS you're using, you can just go to About. And you can see here that this is QGIS 3.36.3 and Python version 3.12.3, QT version 5. Um, looks like that's it. That's all we need to know about this or that's all I need to know about this. You guys might need to know other things. Okay, and let's see. Let's go ahead and close that. And let's go and let's talk about this version. Let's go get the data for this version. Okay, so this is QGIS installers. And what we need to do is if, now normally I will send you the standalone download to install QGIS and I maintain it along with my training files so that you all use the same version. But um, once we release the next version of, Q of Flow2D that's going to use H5Py and HDF5 data files, then you're going to need a different version of QGIS. And so you're going to need the um, network installer because that's the only way that you can get H5Py to work that I'm aware of. So it's going to take, it's going to recognize what computer you're on and it's going to take you to the version that you need. So you just click that to download it and then on your download folder that will look like Oh, sorry, I deleted it. That's okay. Let me just download it again. It's really small, so it doesn't take but a second to download it. And then we open that up, and that looks like this. And the first time that you run this installer, it is going to download the this installate. It's going to download QGIS and install it on your computer. And it's going to the um, network installer is going to put QGIS on the C drive in this directory. So that's great because it's completely isolated and it's not connected to any other uh, the tools on your computer. That's, so that's a good thing. And if you ever break it or corrupt it, it's awesome too because you can just delete it. Um, I have a couple of other files in here that I got by running through a, a class on OSGEO, or I'm sorry, on Python plugin development. So you probably won't see these, but I'm going to show you the location of that class so that you can learn how to build these two files because they are really helpful. Okay, now, so let's go through this downloader and then we'll go back to the website and we'll talk about like some of the resources for learning how to, you know, use more QGIS tools. And let's start with the downloader. So OSGEO. The first time that you run it, it's going to be right here in your download folder. But then from then on, when you have when you need to run it again, because you're going to be able to run it more than once. Oops, sorry, I, I miss I messed up. The next time that you run it, you're going to see here that it's also in your uh, this this um, plugin. Or I mean, th these are shortcut folders for QGIS. And so you can see that it's also right here. So the first time you run it, you'll run it from your download folder, and then from then on, you'll run it from here. So once you run it, I'm not going to finish it, but I'm going to go ahead and let it run it. You'll see that it's got some different options. So we're going to go with the advanced install, and we're going to keep everything default from the internet. Uh, I don't think you have access to whether or not you're doing just me, so I don't know why that's grayed out. Oh, it says it's going to be available to all users. Yeah, which makes sense because it's on the C drive, and so that's going to be available to everyone. And then I do want a desktop icon, and I do want those to be on my start menu. Then I click yes, next. This is going to be where it's going to unpack it, and this is going to be where it's uh, the start menu name. I just leave that default. Um, I don't have any firewall to get through, so I'm just going to use the system firewall. I don't have any special like company firewall. And then I'm going to download it from here. I don't know why you would download it from these other agencies or other uh, sites. I don't know. So I'm just going to download it from the default. And and then it's going to, um, this is going to be what it gives you to download. So this is kind of like the processing tree. And you're going to start with, I don't know what you use command line utilities for, but it's going to give you some by default. And uh, so I don't do anything with this. This I'm going. I, I do. I do this. I do grass. And it's gonna say like see. It's like see. This one says skip. So if you click on it, the first one that comes up will be like that particular version. And then that'll be like an older version. And then that will be skip. 
So you're going to want to click on grass. If you use grass, click uh, the first version. And on QGIS desktop, this will be version 3.36. And then QGIS long-term release desktop, you want to get that one because that's the one you're probably going to want to use. You're probably going to want to run the long term because this one is somewhat experimental, right? I mean, it's the released version, but it so it's very well tested, but it is somewhat experimental. And then I do plugin development, so I want to get QT tools. I don't, probably don't need this one. And then I use Saga sometimes for raster processing and things, so I'm also going to get Saga. And that's all I need from the desktop library or the desktop um, packages. And then the library packages are mostly like uh, Python, but there's also, okay, there's clearly some C++ and things like that in here, but there's also Python. Now it's going to give you the ones that it thinks that you need or that, you know, go along with the packages that you installed from here. It's going to give you all those. So don't, don't mess with the ones that it tells you to keep. And in addition to that, you're going to need to add um, a few libraries. Okay, so H5. Pi is a Python library that we use to uh, build um, HDF5 to export our DAT files as HDF5 data instead of dot instead of ASCII data. So you need this one, and it's the only and the reason that you need to use this installer is because this is like the only way that you can get uh, this package to install is using this package installer. I've tried to install H5Pi on other systems and it never works with QGIS because the paths are always messed up because you know how Python is you have like 50 versions of it on your computer and so you need to use this package installer to help make sure that it's directed to the correct version um, so you're going to want to do h5pi hdf5 gonna get grab that one too and I'm just doing this one right here um, and then let's see hdf5 let's see uh, oh pdol the PDAL system are pretty sweet. These are for uh, like point cloud data processing. And then there's some other libraries in here you might want to just study, but like pandas is in here. So if you want to get the pandas library, I'm skipping it because I don't use pandas, but it's a really excellent library for um, developing databases and stuff like within Python. NumPy is already installed as the uh, add the correct library. So if you're if you have like some kind of Python script that might be using a different version of NumPy, you might want to check this and you might need to use, you know, you might want to do a different version of NumPy. Okay. So let's clear that. Now, one thing that's not in here is Dask. And Dask and Dask distributed are not in here. So not every library is in here. And once you get all the libraries that you want, you can click next and finish. And it didn't do anything, right? Because everything was already installed for me. But if you run it again, like say you're, let's say you go down the road like a month, you run it again and you run through that whole process again, or you add another library or, so, or you know, something like that, it's going to definitely going to download and install something that you need. So that's the beauty of this, um, this network installer. It keeps you up to date really, easy, really quickly. Okay. Oh, by the way, the first time you run it, it might take a while to download everything. Um, on this computer it took about five minutes which is nothing but previously I've done this and it's taken like up to 30 minutes. I think I did it one night in a hotel room and it took up to 30. It was like over 30 minutes. Okay so now once you done run that installer this is what you're gonna see in your shortcut menu and um, the next thing that you need to do is to run some more commands in the shell. So we gotta add a few more commands. Let's see. So the OSGEO shell we need O help will like tell you a list of the commands and kind of like show you that every that the path is correct and working and then you can run all of these commands from the shell or you can run these commands from the python um, module or you can run these commands from like uh, python ide like pycharm but what we need is pip install dask and I've already done it, so it's not going to actually show you anything. And we need pip install dask distributed. Okay. And again, already satisfied. And it's also telling me that this other tool I'm using is not installed correctly, so I might need to uninstall it. And that's Mermaid. So I probably need to uninstall Mermaid. Um, so that would be just pip 
uninstall mermaid. Let's, we can try it. And you can see that it's going to remove it and you just click yes, enter, and it will remove mermaid. And then the next time that I run something, pip install dask. And then like if you need to downgrade to a different version, you can like you can do pip install and then um, mermaid dash and you can put the version that you want to use uh, after the dash. So that's the OSGEO shell. Okay, and that's how you update and get ready to use uh, the import export from HDF5. It's not ready yet, but sometime be before between now and 2025, we'll probably be releasing a limited version of Flow2D that uses HDF5.